Thank you Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Here's a mind blowing demo, okay? I have my phone camera flash switched on over here. I'm gonna put a filter that I ripped off from my 3D glass on top of it. It absorbs light and so the light dims. No surprise, not a big deal. Filters can absorb light. But the question is what's gonna happen if I bring in a second similar filter? Well, my mind says that if it also absorbs light, I should get even less light. Well, let's find out. I bring in a second filter and I get more light. Look at that. How does that make any sense? There is less light when there's first filter, but when I bring in a second filter, how do I get more light? It feels like light is being created. Is energy being created over here? This sounds like a paradox, right? Well, like most things in physics, this is an apparent paradox and it can be resolved if we understand that light is a transverse wave. I kid you not, this boring mundane statement that you'll probably find in some corner of a physics textbook somewhere, which feels like it's unrelated to our life and life problems right now, is literally responsible for this magical looking thing. And not just that, but also 3D television, your Polaroid sunglasses, your LCD displays in laptops and monitors. And by the way, because they're polarized, you can do weird things like this. <laughs> Sorry for that cringe face. Um, I shot this demo a long time back, but the point is all of these effects is because of light is a transverse wave. But hold on a second, what is a transverse wave? How do we know that light is a transverse wave? And how does that explain this paradox? Let's find out. So Feynman, where do we begin? Feynman says, well, because this is light and light is a wave, Mahesh, get up, start waving. I'm like, what? Now, now he says, all right, okay, okay, let's do that. <laughs> What's a wave, he asks. Well, I know what a wave is. It's where a disturbance is propagated through some kind of a medium. Okay, what's the difference between this wave and this wave, he asks. Well, here the particles are oscillating up and down. Here the particles are oscillating left and right. That's the difference. But in general, he says that over here, notice that uh, particles are oscillating perpendicular to the direction of the wave. We call them transverse waves. For example, waves on a string. Particles are oscillating up and down and the wave is going forward perpendicular. But over here, look, the particles are oscillating parallel to the direction in which the wave is traveling. We call such a wave a longitudinal wave. For example, sound waves. And immediately I'm like, okay, but why do we distinguish waves like this? Like, what's the big deal? Ah, says Feynman. The big deal is that, you know, there are more than one ways to set up a transverse wave. For example, we could have a wave that goes, oscillation that goes back and forth. Look, this is also perpendicular to the direction of the wave if you look carefully, right? Look at that. And so this is also a transverse wave. And you can also have oscillations that are like this. I've, I, I'm not demonstrating that anymore, but you can have oscillations like this. You can have oscillations in various ways, but they can all be perpendicular, they'll all be transverse. But there's only one way to have oscillations parallel, and therefore there's only one way to have longitudinal waves. But again, I ask, so what? What's the big deal if there are more than one ways to do that? Now Feynman says we can do some very interesting things with this. For example, imagine a transverse wave on a string like this, but they're in different planes. Like over here, the oscillations are vertical, horizontal, and this is in some different plane, but look, they're all perpendicular to the direction of the motion. So this is all a transverse wave. What would happen if you were to input this wave, if you were to put this wave through some kind of a wooden frame, which had some horizontal bars like this, what's gonna happen, he asks. Oh. Let's analyze this, okay? So if you were to have a horizontal wave that comes over here, we can pretty much see that it would just go right through. But a, a rigorous analysis, the rigorous way to do this analysis would be, we would say that, hey, when the wave comes in, you know, comes over here, the wave is going to force this particle in this direction because it's a horizontal wave. Now, can the particle, the rope, piece over here, can it oscillate like this? Yes, it can oscillate because there is space over here. Because it can oscillate, a wave gets generated and so the wave goes through. So horizontal waves can easily get through. Makes sense, right? But what about a vertical wave? Ooh. Well, if you have a vertical wave, just like before, when the wave reaches over here, it's going to force the particle to oscillate up and down. But look, now there are bars over here which will not allow it to oscillate up and down. In fact, you can now imagine that the energy, when it goes and hits the bar, the bar absorbs the energy, which means the energy of this wave gets absorbed. It doesn't allow it to go through, and therefore, nothing happens. The wave does not go through at all. So you can see, see we are selectively absorbing vertical waves, but we are allowing the horizontal waves to pass through. We can't do that in longitudinal waves. But anyways, 
Now comes an interesting question. What if the wave is neither vertical nor horizontal? It's neither like this, neither like this, not like that, but somewhere in between. Well, now when the wave comes and hits over here, again, it's going to force the particle of the rope over here to oscillate this way it's by pushing it this way. But what's, going, what's it gonna do? And I'm like, my instincts is like, well, it's gonna hit the uh, bar over here, so it will not allow it to oscillate, right? Right, Feynman? And Feynman says, Mahesh, check out this picture. I'm like, wait, <laughs> why are we looking at this? Over here, notice, we are pushing that roller this way, but that roller will accelerate forward. Why? Because this means that vectors or forces in general have effects in directions um, other than where it's directed. So for example, this force has a component or has an effect in the horizontal, that's why it accelerates it. In fact, if you want to figure out how much effect a force or any vector has in any particular direction, just drop a perpendicular like this and you will find the effect like this. This represents the effect of it. And now if this angle was smaller, the effect becomes bigger. You can see if the force was par parallel, you'll get the maximum effect because all the force is used up in accelerating it. And that makes again, intuitive sense, right? It's just inconvenient, but if you did this, it would accelerate much more. And if the angle becomes larger, that effect becomes smaller. And if the angle becomes 90 degrees, <laughs> that effect becomes zero. Again, this makes intuitive sense. If you were to push the roller <laughs> into the ground, now it's not going to accelerate in the horizontal at all. A vertical force has no effect in the horizontal at all. The same thing happens, so it, so it doesn't have any force at all. The same thing happens when you try to paint. If you try to push a roller this way, it will have an effect in the horizontal and that's why the paint roller will go up. But if you were to push the paint roller this way, vertically into the, or horizontally into the wall, well, now the force is perpendicular. It's not going to allow the roller to go up. Makes sense, right? The same thing can be applied over here. We could now revisit this and we could say that, hey, this force has no effect in the perpendicular. That's the key. Forces have effects in all the directions, but in the perpendicular direction. This time, the horizontal space is perpendicular over here. Therefore, the force has no effect and therefore it doesn't pass through. But what about this one? Look, this time the vector is not perpendicular to the horizontal, so it will have some effect in the horizontal direction. So just like how if you were to push the paint roller this way, it would accelerate in this direction. When this piece of rope is being pushed this way, it will accelerate in the horizontal which means two things. A, it will oscillate in the horizontal, giving us a horizontal wave. But secondly, since the oscillations will be less than what we have over here because the force over here was less than the original force. So we'll have, that means, a smaller horizontal wave passing through. So look at what this means. This window frame acts like a filter. It only allows horizontal components to pass through. Therefore, whatever we have you input over here, the output over here, whatever goes through, it'll only be horizontal waves. And I apologize <laughs> for this crappy drawing because it looks like a snake over here. But the point is that over here, oscillations were in all different planes, but over here, all the oscillations will be in the horizontal. It'll be of different heights depending on the angles over here, but it'll all be in the horizontal. And this kind of a wave is what we call an unpolarized wave, where the oscillations are all random in different planes. Versus this is what we call a plane polarized wave. And now we can annoy Feynman a little bit. I'm Feynman, why is it called plane polarized? Isn't polarized mean that oscillations are stuck to a plane? Isn't this word redundant? Feynman says, ah, there are different kinds of polarization. For example, there's something called circular polarization. It's pretty cool. It's what's necessary to understand 3D television, for example, but we're not gonna talk about it over here. So there are different kinds of polarizations. Plane polarization is one kind of it, but since in this video we'll only talk about plane polarized waves, let's forget about the word plane. Let's, let's call it polarized, okay? But anyways, now, putting this to the test, Feynman asks one more question. What if we had another such window, another such filter, where it was vertical? What would the wave over here look like as it goes through? Why don't you pause and think about it? All right, well, since this only allows vertical components, but this does not have any vertical components, this only contains horizontal components, nothing will get through. So if you have two filters that are like crossed, meaning perpendicular to each other, then nothing will get through, no waves will get through the second filter. In fact, this is how we can understand whether something is polarized or not. If you try to do this with longitudinal waves, we'll just go straight through, but only transverse wave will not, and that's how we can test whether something is a transverse or not. 
which brings us to light. But even before Feynman starts talking about it, we can guess what an unpolarized light wave and a polarized light wave could mean because we can now relate it to what we've already seen and learned before. This is a cool way to gain intuition in physics by using the observables to understand the unobservables. And it would be pretty cool to learn everything that way, but we don't have Feynman or Einstein all the time with us to help us make the relations. But what we do have is Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. Brilliant is uh, brilliant at connecting things and providing a hands-on experience in math, data, programming, and AI. I resonate with it because just like with my channel, Brilliant helps you build intuition and rediscover ideas yourself. And because this is an active process, even with just 15 to 20 minutes every day, you will start building problem solving skills soon. Take probability, for example. The moment you go in, you immediately start estimating the winning chances of a soccer game, start interpreting the graphs, and even conduct simulations. And uh, that's just the first lesson. <laughs> It's built for learners of any level. So that's awesome, right? What's more awesome is if you love this, then you can actually try everything for free. Everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by just going to brilliant.org slash floatheadphysics. You'll also get a 20% off on their annual premium subscription. The link is also in the description. Not only will you develop a daily learning habit, but you'll also end up supporting my channel. So do check out the link below. Now back to the video. Just like the rope waves, light waves are also transverse. Here, the oscillations are not particles, but fields, electric and magnetic fields. I've ignored the magnetic fields over here. But if you look at the direction of the electric field oscillation, look, they're always perpendicular to the direction of the motion. But just like what we saw earlier, it can be in different planes. You have vertical plane here, horizontal, and some different plane over here. So such kind of light is what we call an unpolarized light. Light from most sources is unpolarized because we're getting it from atoms vibrating randomly. So all electric fields are in all different planes. But now what happens when you incident this on a polaroid filter? Just like how this window only allowed one particular component, this will also only allow one particular component. But how exactly Feynman? And Feynman says, great, you should always ask such questions. Analogies are great, but you should always, after understanding the analogy, dig deeper and understand exactly what's going on. So let's do that. So if you were to zoom in over here, the key thing about Polaroids is that they have long chain molecules. For example, over here, we have vertical long chain molecules, for example, okay? which means electrons can easily oscillate along the long chain molecule direction, along the vertical over here, but they will have a hard time oscillating in the horizontal. Let's just assume for simplicity, they cannot oscillate in the horizontal at all, okay? So what's going to happen as different waves fall on it, just like before in the string cases, we'll see over here. If you have a vertical electric field vector that's passing on it, then it will make the electrons oscillate in the vertical direction, which means it's going to absorb the energy from the electric field. And in doing so, that electric field will get absorbed. Now, of course, this electron, as it oscillates, will produce its own electromagnetic wave. But again, that will be absorbed by the other electrons and so on and so forth. All of that energy will eventually be absorbed and will be converted into heat. And so, long story short, vertical electric field in this particular case will be completely absorbed. It will not go through. But what about a horizontal electric, wave, electric field vector? Well, it will try to oscillate like this, but the electron cannot oscillate this way at all which means there's, it's not gonna have any effect, it will just go straight through it. So this, is, this means this particular thing is opaque to vertical electric field filters, but it's transparent to horizontal electric field, electric field vectors. Pretty cool, right? And what if you have an electric field vector which is neither vertical nor horizontal? Well, just like before, we can now decompose it. We could say that, hey, it's it has some vertical component, and that vertical component will be completely absorbed and it has some horizontal component, that horizontal component will pass through. So look, just like before, it, this particular acts like a filter which only allows horizontal components. So what's interesting is that if the long chain molecules are vertical, this will behave like having slits or horizontal bars this way. We say that it has a horizontal pass axis because it only allows horizontal electric field vectors to go through it. So when the light goes through it, it'll all be horizontal. It'll be stuck to a particular plane, all the oscillations, all the electric field vectors. So we get a polarized light. That's why this is called a Polaroid filter.
Okay, now, and again, this is a bad drawing, but let me show you a better way of uh, depicting unpolarized and polarized light. We can depict unpolarized light this way, randomly scattered everywhere. But polarized light, you can see all oscillations are in the vertical. Okay, quick question. Feynman asks Mahesh, what will happen if I were to put another filter, but horizontal over here? What's gonna happen? Well, this is also horizontal, which will allow electric field vectors in the horizontal to go through, which means all of it should just go through. Correct. And now Feynman asks, what if we rotate it and make it 90 degrees? Ooh, then just like over here, nothing will pass through, nothing at all. This makes sense, right? But it is so much more cooler when you do the experiment because the brightness of the light, intensity of the light keeps changing. Let's think about it, it'll make sense now, okay? If I were to shine light, that light that comes from the flashlight or anything is usually unpolarized. But now when it passes through the filter, it gets polarized. Its intensity reduces a little bit because it is absorbing. In this case, it'll be absorbing some of the vertical electric field. So some light is being absorbed. It gets polarized. But now if you have a second filter kept like this, well, all the light, pretty much all of the light will go through, right? Because it's also horizontal. But I know that if I turn it and make it 90 degrees, none of the light would go through. Which means if you did this experiment actually, and as you turn this 90 degrees, you will see that the light over here starts becoming dimmer, dimmer, and when you turn it completely, the light would completely disappear, no light would get through. This is how you can experimentally tell that, aha, light must be an electro, uh, a transverse wave. And I find that absolutely beautiful because we cannot observe electric field vectors, we cannot see all of them, and yet we can make a beautiful argument by using the observables, we can understand the unobservables and we can say that, aha, light has to be transverse. Isn't that beautiful? So beautiful that we can actually do it. And I did that, but at the beginning of the episode, I did not show all of those setups. And now I'll show it to you, okay? So here we have light coming from the torch of my phone, and that is an unpolarized light right now. Now see what's going to happen. I'm going to take a filter that I ripped off from my 3D glasses and I'm going to keep it under my camera. <laughs> and I did not show you that initially. <laughs> so that means there is going to be a filter under the camera over here. And so the light that I get over here into the camera is polarized light. You cannot make out the difference, of course, because you can't see the electric field vectors, but that's the polarized light. Now we are seeing the polarized light. Okay, next I'm going to bring in a second filter, okay? And uh, yeah, just to show that as another filter. <laughs> and I keep it on top of this light source, but nothing happens because the second filter is oriented the same way as the first filter. So now this light is also polarized, but nothing changed, right? The amount of light that is coming did not change because this filter is oriented the same way. But now we're gonna rotate, not this filter, because it's close to the camera, you can't see it, but I'm gonna rotate this filter and I'm gonna make it 90 degrees. What's going to happen? Well, the light will get killed. Okay, so let's do that. If I do that over here, the light will not come out from here. It'll completely disappear and that's what we we'll get to see. Here it goes, here it goes. I skipped all of this detail, but look at this. Look at this, oh my God, is it's happening. It's happening, wow, isn't that beautiful? Amazing, I did this demo like more than, more than eight years ago, but I still find it so incredible whenever I look at this. Oh, look at that. When I, if it's not perpendicular, it won't work. It's only when it's perpendicular. Look, look, look. We are now in this position, cross polarized, no light gets through. Beautiful, isn't it? So the secret is that this is not one filter. There are, only, there are already two filters. There's one filter very close to the camera, which was hidden, which you couldn't see. I mean, not hidden, hidden in plain sight, okay. But then now comes the big question, the climax of this video. What happens when I bring this filter? It's not a second filter, it's a third filter. I'm gonna bring in the third filter now. And when I bring in the third filter, I get a lot of light, but what's going on? Why does the third filter, which is brought in between over here, gives you a lot of light? Again, it's a great idea to pause the video and think about it. All right, let's investigate it. The key point is that this is also angle, let's say 45 degrees to both the filters, right? What happens when I bring it in? Well, now notice these vectors are no longer perpendicular. So some component in this direction will pass through, which means now these field vectors are no longer perpendicular. That means some component of this will pass through, giving us some light. And here we have it. 
So look at what's happening. When I get rid of this filter, look, they two, these two become cross-polarized and nothing gets true. But when I add this filter, it no longer is cross-polarized. So it seems paradoxical that adding more filters gives you some light, but when you think in terms of polarization, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? And again, if you look in terms of the light intensity, it just looks crazy. So again, with just two filters, we get nothing because they're cross-polarized. But when we get the third filter, we get some light because it's no longer cross-polarized. Cross-polarized, no longer cross-polarized. So let's get back to that video and see if it all makes sense now. I'm bringing the third filter in between and since it's no longer cross-polarized, I'll get some light. And that's exactly what's going on. It's no longer cross-polarized over here. Cross-polarized, no light. And now I'm gonna bring it in at some angle. Look at it, it's at some angle, no longer cross-polarized. And therefore I get some light over here. So there is no light being created. There is no problem with energy conservation earlier. All of that energy was absorbed, but now some of the energy is passing through. It looks paradoxical, it looked magical because I did not, you did not see that there was a filter all along. Sorry for that, but it's beautiful, right? <laughs> And now let's look at what's going on over here. Again, I'm so sorry for this cringe face. Oh my God, I didn't have any other demo, but what's going on over here? Well, light from laptops or LCD screens in general is already plain polarized. For example, let's say in the vertical. That's how LCDs work. They work because of polarization itself. All right, so the light into the camera itself directly is plain polarized, but what if I keep a filter in front of it now? Well, if I orient it in such a way that it's perpendicular to the direction of the electric field vectors over here, let's say it's horizontal, then all of this will be killed. And I first do that, again, I didn't show you in the, in the video, but look at this, sorry for my cringe face, but I again, kept a filter and I'm now crossing it. I kept a filter, I turned it until it crossed the electric field vectors and that's why you see nothing. Not because my laptop is turned off, the light is coming from it, but since it's polarized light, it's being crossed and I'm getting rid of all the light using a filter, which is in front of my camera, which you can't see. And now, what if I bring in a second filter at some angle, say at 45 degrees? Same thing will happen just like earlier. Now, this is no longer crossed with the electric field vectors because now some of the electric field vectors will pass through in this direction. And as a result, it's no longer 90 degrees over here. Some of it will pass through over here, which means I'll get some light and I'll be able to see whatever is in the field of view of this particular filter. Whatever is here, I will be able to see. And that's how when I bring in the second filter, I get this beautiful effect. Polarization is awesome. There's so much more to it. Like there's circular polarization, which is useful in 3D television. Polarization is useful in your shades. There's so much more to it. And all of this happens, why? Because of one and only one reason, because light is a transverse wave. All of this happens because of this one mundane, boring looking fact, but hopefully you will now say it's not mundane at all. And hopefully this statement that light is a transverse wave will have more gravitas next time you hear it. Stay tuned for more. I think, yeah, all right.